Tonight, criticism for Cuomo, heat intensifying around the governor after a New York Times report says he interfered with his own anti-corruption commission when some of the questioning went directly to the administration, what the governor's critics are saying tonight. As outrage grows over the death of Eric Garner following an altercation with the NYPD, video has surfaced of a second chokehold incident involving the NYPD. We will show you that video, and also Donna will have an exclusive interview with the Garner family. And what are the top races this election season in our neck of the woods? Well, we're going to hear from Politico's campaigns and elections editor on who to watch out for this November. Good evening and welcome to RFL, everyone. I'm Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us this Thursday evening, July 24th. And we begin tonight with a growing fallout from that Times expose on Governor Cuomo's interference with the Moreland Commission. Now, it was a group of outside prosecutors and investigators that he created, the governor himself, to investigate corruption in Albany. Now, here's the governor, if anybody forgets, announcing the formation of that group and what they do just over a year ago. I believe with the credibility of this commission, you can go a long way towards restoring that public trust. I believe there has never been a more credible group of law enforcement professionals assembled in this state on this type of commission, period. Okay, so integrity, restoring public trust. Now, the governor, he gave that panel subpoena power and promised it would be totally independent. They could look anywhere they wanted in state government, including, he said, at the governor himself and potentially prosecute those who had broken that public trust. The commission, however, was disbanded nine months after it was created. And just coincidentally, it was disbanded on budget night in a late well, we hours add on to the budget that seemingly made this go away and raised a whole lot of questions. Now, after a three year investigation, the Times released uh, their report yesterday saying that the governor, in fact, hobbled the commission, using it for political leverage and making sure it didn't focus on the governor's office at all. Critics, they're calling for a criminal investigation, some asking uh, that at least those close to the governor maybe step down. We'll see where the investigation goes, but no one can debate that this is a headache for the governor in an election season. And today, Cuomo's Republican challenger in the governor's race, Westchester County Exec Rob Astorino, released a statement of his own saying in part, quote, Governor Cuomo can't keep hiding from the New York press corps. His office tampered with multiple investigations to protect political cronies and financial contributors. He needs to account for that in a public forum, and he needs to do it today. Now, again, there's no hard evidence um, as to what Mr. Astorino is saying. However, there are certainly allegations um, that the governor's office got involved. Now, Mr. Cuomo has perpetrated one of the great breaches of public trust, Mr. Astorino goes on to say, in New York history, and he says that in itself is saying something. Now, Governor Cuomo did respond to claims of interference in an interview with Crane's um, New York business, and this was back in April, when a lot of people pressed him, why did you disband this? Well, he said to Crane's that the Moreland Commission was, quote, my commission. He went on to say, it's my commission, my subpoena power, my Moreland Commission. I can appoint it. I can disband it. I can appoint you. I can unappoint you tomorrow. So we definitely have a difference of when it was created to after it was disbanded, what the governor's, let's say, mission statement for the group was. So the question is, interference? He went on to say, it's my commission. I can't interfere with it because it's mine. It's controlled by me, Andrew Cuomo. Now, of course, the Times piece definitely raised legitimate questions for the governor. Among them, were the governor's actions, did they cross over into illegality here? What political risk would this pose for the governor, as we said, with the election this coming November? And what is next on the corruption front when it comes to the U.S. attorney? And what also happens in Albany, both in response to the report and the state's ongoing efforts to crack down on corruption when it comes to state government? Now, earlier today, I spoke via Skype with Jimmy Veekland, now G Veekland, and Jimmy is the Capitol New York's Albany bureau chief, and we talked about both the Times piece and what could be next for Governor Cuomo. You heard the governor say defiantly, this is my commission, um, this is my baby in effect here, I'll go where I want, I created it, um, you can't in effect hold it over me. In substance, he's right, I, I guess, but once it was created, 
certainly when you talk to some of the commissioners, and we spoke to one of the founding members that really was put one of the advisors as part of the creation of this thing, they were very disappointed um, with what it turned out to versus what they were led to believe it would be. And it doesn't seem, maybe they were naive, um, but also I think there were, you can argue, say, they were given a false bill of goods as to how much free reign they would have, as to how far they could go, and really what the aims of the commission would be. Well, I, I think that that's right. Uh, I know that we've been hearing, so we've been trying to put commissioners on the spot. Most of them aren't really talking right now because many of them thought this would be an independent exercise. I think what's interesting is that Cuomo treated this commission, which had investigatory powers, which had subpoena powers, the same way he treats commissions for other parts of his uh, gov governorship. If you're an executive, it is your commission. You should be able to, to kind of hear what, what you want to hear. I, I get that. Jimmy, I get that, but but the problem is he made it a point at the very beginning when he talked about draining the swamp and everything. They have the subpoena power and investigative power wherever they want to go, including me, including my administration. So it's one thing to say, okay, you know what, uh, this is my baby and I can control it. There's another thing in telling everybody at the time, but you know what, don't come near me. He said the contrary. Well, yes, and I think that that's something that people are immediately seizing upon, that there is quite a gulf between what he said uh, and what ended up happening. Um, the administration's explanation of this has been an interesting one. They now say it was never supposed to be independent. And in a lengthy 13-page response to the New York Times, they're making the argument that this is not going to be the case. We've seen Republican candidates, including Westchester County Executive Rob Astorino, pouncing on this, calling Cuomo disingenuous, uh, and calling on perhaps perhaps criminal or other investigations of his role in this and the role played by Larry Schwartz, Cuomo's top aide.